guys, this is Angela with Glittering the Coast. Today I'm going to show you how to take a boring stainless steel tumbler and turn it into something really cute and sparkly just like this. So on this tutorial, this is called a power wash method where you get the really cool effect with the black. And I'm going to show you how I reverse weed some vinyl too. So if you're interested in learning how I made this tumbler, stick around and let's get started. I'm mixing up my epoxy by KS Resin. I always use Liquidy Split Ultra UV. It sets in about two hours and I can continue working with it. So I love it for fast projects. So I always put on my glove whenever I'm about to start glittering my tumbler. It has been prepped with white spray paint and I mixed up about uh, five milliliters of epoxy for this. You always want to measure by volume and not by weight. So get your measuring cup, get you a popsicle stick, stir it up until it's completely combined. You want to just put a little bit of epoxy on that cup. A little bit goes a long way. You see me really working it into the cup right now and um, going over and just making sure that all areas of this cup has epoxy on it get that bottom rim done really, really well. If not, you're gonna have to go back in with a second coat of epoxy or some glue or something like that in order to uh, make sure that you have some full coverage. So the glitter that I'm using today is by KCC Glitter. It is so pretty. It is a white glitter, but it kind of has like a pinkish uh, hue to it. And it's just a really magical type of glitter. It's not chunky. It is a little bit thicker than like a fine glitter, but it's not chunky. So it's going to lay down on this tumbler really, really well. And my epoxy won't soak into it whenever I go to put it on. So this is a 20 ounce tumbler. I have 30 ounces of epoxy mixed up for this. And I do that just in case the glitter happens to soak up the epoxy but typically like I said on the fine glitters they are really really good and uh, they don't soak up the epoxy and I'm making sure that all of the glitter has epoxy on it this takes some time be patient it's a really fun process I love doing this I have no idea why this part is fun for me but it is. I think I just enjoy watching all of the glitter get covered with the epoxy. It's um, just a really, really smooth application there. Okay, so what I've got going on here, I've already got my two coats of epoxy on my cup. You didn't watch me put my second coat on. It's not really interesting. So I took my silhouette machine and I cut out pieces of vinyl and these are little ghosts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place all these ghosts kind of sporadically on my tumbler and you'll see why I did it um, in this green color in just a minute. Um, so I've just got his eyes poking out and then I've got the outline of the ghost itself on this cup. So go outside, grab some Dawn Power Wash. You need this for this type of cup and what I'm going to do is create a really cool looking black, like a spider web type of, um, of look on this cup. So you just spray all over the cup and with the power wash. And then you go in with whatever color type of spray paint that you want. I chose black. This is what my customer wanted. And um, I'm just making it so that you can see like a peekaboo of the white glitter. So after you've power washed it, you're going to spray paint it with whatever color you want to grab your garden hose and spray it off and it sounds kind of crazy but it will dry for me at least during this type of weather it's really hot outside it will dry within a matter of like 10 minutes so now that i've brought it back inside the house i put it back on my cup turner it's easy for me to work with it on here i am now removing the green ghost outline that I put on. So whenever I originally cut this file, um, he, he had a mouth, so <laughs> um, I'm removing the mouth part too. Get all of that green part off and in a moment we're going to add um, 
some outlining and some different little ghost guys on there. This was a really sticky process. It does take some time, so you know, don't get frustrated with your with your cups. Just take your time, and um, the more time that you take with it, then the better off your results will be. I'm a firm believer in that. My eyeballs did not come out the way I wanted them to, so I grabbed some rubbing alcohol and I just and some paper towels, and I just took off the eyeballs. They didn't come out like I wanted to, but that's okay. We just roll with it. All right, with my cutting machine, I cut out some more um, outlines of the ghost. And he has his eyeballs in his mouth there. Now this is called reverse weeding. I love that. Okay, so I didn't want to use that um, the I'm wanting to use the outline of the ghost on almost all of my pieces right now and I couldn't get just his little outline and his eyeballs off without getting the rest of his body off too. So you can do this for any type of vinyl if you have really small words and letters that are cut out and you can't get them off of your paper then take your transfer paper link to my bio and put it on top of the whole uh, vinyl project that you cut out then you can go in and actually take off the pieces that you don't want and it'll stay stuck onto your transfer paper so hopefully that made some sense but if you have any questions feel free to leave me a comment I'm taking some just a few of those um, solid pieces and putting it on the cup just sporadically and I really really love this vinyl I believe it is tech wrap I'll, I'll put a link in my description a box for you to go take a look but it's really cool it's holographic it's like it's pink and it kind of turns to an orangey color it's really pretty it stays on really well too anytime I do any vinyl work I take it outside and I spray paint it with rust-oleum two times clear and I typically do it in a mat so this got two coats of clear spray paint on it that way I didn't get any bubbles on my vinyl and I can most of the time get lots of bubbles everywhere so I want to reduce the amount of bubbles that I have. So spray painting it really helps not to have those bubbles and uh, you spend less time putting heat on your epoxy trying to pop your bubbles that way. It also will not lift whenever I'm doing epoxy. Um, if you don't have it down good enough then there's a possibility that your epoxy can lift some vinyl so I always spray paint it it only takes a few extra minutes so go in with your heat gun oh I'm sorry your torch not your heat gun go in with your torch and make sure that all of the bubbles have been popped and I have said this in other videos if you use a heat gun and you're only trying to pop bubbles it's going to spread your epoxy around and um, most of the time I think it would be okay, but me personally, I would rather use a torch instead of a heat gun. So now that I have, let's see, I think I did one or two coats of epoxy here and I've got to get all of these extra little hard pieces off. So I'm sanding it with 120 grit. You can use 220, you can use 120. I wouldn't go any far, um, lower than that or else you could start scratching your images underneath or your glitter could come off. I make sure that I am using you know extreme caution when you're using your exacto knife you want to make sure you get all the epoxy off of the rim any excess spray paint that's on there it'll come off a little bit too and I love using my sanding block. It helps my hand to kind of grip a little bit better in order to get the rim really, really smooth. And most of the time it exposes a tiny sliver of silver. And I like to make sure that that is there so that my epoxy adheres to the cup. And that makes sure that I don't have a break. Um, there's no seal that will be broken if someone is rough with washing their cup. So now that I have all this lovely spray paint, that's inside of the cup. I'm just taking some acetone right now and some paper towels and I am going over it 
and it removes really easily. If you're having an issue with removing your spray paint, you can use um, Goo Gone, just some stuff like that. Make sure that your cup is really, really, really clean if you do use anything that is oil-based because you want to make sure that that does not get on your surface while you're trying to epoxy your cup from there. So this is the last and final coat of doing my epoxy. And like um, earlier, you just make sure you go over the cup and go slowly. Take your time with this. It's not a race. You want to make sure you're going top to bottom, bottom to top. And spread a thin layer of epoxy all over your cup. Go over it several times. Make sure you don't have any bumps, ridges, glops of epoxy on there. Make sure it's thin if you're using a thick uh, epoxy. That way that um, there's no bubbles on it. Make sure you go around the bottom. Get that nice and flat. Go around the sides again. Use your heat torch. Get all of your bubbles gone. We do not want bubbles in these cups. If you do have bubbles, sand the whole thing. Lightly sand it. Re-epoxy. And hopefully that will solve any of your bubbles or your lint problems. So I'm just making sure I take my time, get all the lines out. If I have too much epoxy, I just take it off with my glove, put it back in my cup. So if you have any questions, feel free to send me a comment and I will do my best to answer it. And hopefully you love this tumbler. It's really easy to make. You can use any type of design. You can use flowers, leaves, ghosts, pumpkins. You can do anything. So get creative with it. Let's see what you can come up with. Thank you so much for watching. If you've liked this video, if you found it helpful, I hope to keep making more. Like and subscribe, please. Thank you so much for watching.